God bless you. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. I reach out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Nairobi. Receive the word of God. I'm sent to you by God. I'm God's servant. We are doing well in Nairobi. I hope you're also doing well where you are. All over, all over. We, 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 we feel like we want to share with you the word of God and to welcome you to be with us. Thank you for being with us. Facebook, YouTube, you are good. And I've, I'm so much encouraged to know some of you are joining me in the vision we have in Nairobi. I said last time we are purchasing a glorious property that will be an international altar, mighty, mighty altar. We are buying it at around 340 million Kenya shillings. That is 3 million US dollars. And the Lord spoke to me after deep, deep prayer that I anoint and raise millionaires for this project. I welcome you now to join me. You get my number and maybe my email uh, in the, on the screen. By God's grace, call me. I will, we will share with you the details. Uh, this month, 7th, 17th July, we will be there. It's a big sanctuary, 300 and feet, 350 feet long, 100 feet width, with glorious offices right in the highway, Kagudo Road. And, and I tell you, the bank has got that money, given us that loan, and we want to pay a deposit of 100 million Kenya shillings. That is eight, uh, allowed 855,000 US dollars. And we have a big fundraising on 21st August. We would like to give you a chance to work with us. We can give you our church account and Swift code. And you join us. And please, if you're in Nairobi, on, 20, on 17th July, I'll have anointing service right there. Kagodo Road, if you go Kagodo Road, we can give you details. On 21st August, is the fundraising. And I tell you, I know God, you do great things. Receive that burden and calling. Join me because it's all for God's glory. God bless you. Today, we, we are sharing about uh, how do you keep your deliverance? Now, remember... Uh, just to inform you, when you are delivered, there are several things you experience. I would like you to understand the status. One thing, the oppressive forces disappear. Because some people don't know where they are really delivered. I say the oppressive forces disappear. Number two, heaviness that sat on your brain, especially the brain, is lifted. And your brain can think creatively in the right direction in a very great way. You start becoming an achiever. Another thing is uneasiness goes away. When you are not delivered, you are never, you are, there's what we call being uneasy. You are always insecure. You are bowed. You are not able to do the will of God. And easiness goes away. And you are able to do the will of God. To have your right mind. And become what God destined for you. Another thing that happens when you are delivered. Is that burdens. All load lightens. Instead of being so much burdened. You receive anointing. So powerful that whatever you felt you cannot handle, you are able to handle your family, your business, your own self. That's powerful. And whenever you are delivered, there is an inner sense, inner sense of liberty, inner sense of liberty, freedom, and divine satisfaction or contentment. When you are delivered, there is that inner sense of liberty, inner, because the headquarter of your life is inside you, your heart, inside your soul. 
there is that deep sense of liberty, freedom, and also you sense godly satisfaction and contentment in you and around you. Yes, when you are delivered, the joy of the Lord comes and you are able to rejoice. It doesn't matter what is around you. Notice there's a difference between happiness and joy. Joy is from inside. It's a product of deliverance and Holy Spirit's presence. And there is sort of deliverance. Uh, if you read the scripture uh, in Romans chapter 14 verse 17, the Bible says uh, that it talks about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you look at that scripture, uh, that is Romans chapter 14, uh, and verse 17, the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You can write that somewhere. Righteousness is the right start before God. You start before God knowing I'm accepted and heaven is with me. Joy is an inner outcome, inner product of rejoicing and being satisfied and quickened. You feel like now I'm happy to serve God. And the peace of God, the peace of God is, is, is a product of anointing whereby you can live among enemies. Where the Bible says the Lord prepares a table before my enemies. You can thrive because the peace of God surpasses human understanding. Therefore, righteousness, peace, and joy, not in people. Not in anything else, but in the Holy Ghost. And that's why one of the outcome of the Holy Spirit, one of the ways that somebody who's delivered should be able to keep deliverance is after you cast out a demon, you need to bring in the Holy Ghost. Anytime I have delivered service, I end up by teaching that person immediately the truth of the Holy Ghost. And they receive the Holy Ghost, speaking tongues and prophesy. Because it's the, you have cast out a spirit. Bring the powerful Holy Spirit to reign. And whenever the Holy Ghost comes on a person, fire surround that person. No demon can dare stay around. Another thing that needs to be done when the Holy Ghost comes and you keep deliverance is a very systematic, dedicated commitment to study the word of God as food for your soul. Not information, food, power for your soul. Dairy, 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 in a way that the word of God becomes so much you know, there's a way you, you eat, you read the word of God, until it molds your mind. So much that you can only be, or you can only think, you can only act according to the, to the word. And then it's important to know, Jesus prayed that we be united. One thing that demons fear is when true believers are able to gather as body of Christ and worship together. You know, church is body of Christ. He the head is Christ. We are organs. Look at my head. If this head, head is hurt or wounded, I cannot, it cannot wash itself. It will need my left heart to, to, to wash the wood and to dress the wood. It will require my, the legs to walk to the clinic for medical attention. It will require the mouth
to speak on his behalf. It will require the whole body to acknowledge that there's an organ in the body that requires some attention. You know, when believers gather together, the organs of the body are able to serve one another, and Christ being the head can coordinate us as organ in the body system. And one thing uh, some believers should do is to join a group of believers who do not only meet to pray, but they meet as members of the body and function under Christ as members in the same body. And people who regularly meet for three things. They meet to worship. They also meet to study the word of God. And they also meet for the ministry. Another thing is, you need to pray in understanding and in Holy Ghost thanks. If you pray for me to the level that you know me, release yourself to the level that you don't know, the Holy Ghost takes over. When the Holy Ghost takes over and you speak in tongues and truly read you, Satan get confused. I remember one time there's a, a lady in our church who used to live in an estate where she woke up very early in the morning and received the Holy Spirit at 3 a.m. She spoke in tongues for two hours. The owner of that residence, it was a, a commercial building, woke up screaming and saying, who is that person who has chased away my powers? The owner of the building, was a witch. So when my, uh, our sister was speaking in tongues, can you imagine the Holy Ghost was addressing the powers in that witch? Do you know when you speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost is able to pray according to the will of the Father and is able to attack Satan because the Holy Ghost knows everything and he is able to raise you to a standard. It's good that you pray in understanding and also raise yourself to praying in tongues. Another thing is that place the blood of Christ on yourself, on your business, on your family, and anything that pertains you. Make sure you place the blood of Christ on those things and do it daily. The Bible says in Revelation 12 verse 11, and they overcame Satan by the blood of Christ, the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved God to the end. Never forget the three. The blood of Christ, the word of their testimony, and they loved Jesus up to the end. Let the devil know, my love for Christ is up to the end. That's very important. De determine as near as you can which spirits have been cast out of you. Make a list of these areas so that you cover. The areas that Satan used to attack you before you are delivered, know them, cover them, cover them, pray for those areas, receive authority in those areas. This, those are the areas that the evil one would like to attack again. But if you cover them all, you don't have to worry. The way demons gain re-entry is through several things to be what we call laxity. Eh? You, you are so loose. You are not active as a man of God, a woman of God. Another thing is undisciplined thought life. Thought life, thoughts that have no discipline, they open up to another attack of demons. The mind is the battlefield so much that demons you like to gain entry, you must cast down imaginations. Bring every thought into obedience of Christ. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Our weapons are not carnal, they are mighty in God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ. We must bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to and 5. 
And I think that you help you keep the reverence. Pray to the Father, our Father God, fervently. Ask him to make you alert, sober, and vigilant against wrong thoughts. If you read First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because you are adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Rest, resist him steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same suffering I experienced by your brothers in the world. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Can you hear that, friends? God do what? Perfect. Number two, establish. Number three, strengthen. Number four, settle you. Note the four things that God wants to do. God wants to perfect you because he is perfect. Establish you, even your family and your youth life. Number three, strengthen you. And number four, settle you. That is First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. That is very important. Very, very important. The demons signal their approach to you by the fact that the old thought, the old thought patterns you once had are now trying to return to you. One of the signal that you need to watch is the pattern of the old thoughts. If you read the pattern of old thoughts, those symptoms, signs are coming. Cover your mind in the blood of Christ and rebuke Satan. Don't allow re-entry. As soon as this happens, immediately rebuke them. State verbally that you refuse them quickly as possible with authority because Christ overcame Satan. You have the authority also to do something, to lose ages of the Lord, to battle the demons. Bind the demons and loose upon them the spirits of destruction. Yes. Receive ministering angels allowed you. You are able to ask God, I receive ministering angels allowed me. You realize when Jesus was being tempted by the devil, the Bible says after Satan added all the temptation, there's what happened. If you go to the Bible, uh, that is Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, 11. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Verse 11, The devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I declare Satan leave you, and angels now take charge of you. Come back power free. Cast out demons. Be secure. The Bible says in Luke 10, verse 19, God give us power to trod over serpent and scorpions. Those are satanic powers. Trod over them. Trod over the powers of the evil one. And nothing will whatsoever hurt us. And now in just name, you will live on. You are covered in the blood of Christ. You will remain awake for God. For the word of God has called you. God has called you. The author and perfecter of our faith. He who began good work in us and in you. We will continue with it. Until the day of the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord cover you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The God we preach give you peace now. In Christ I pray.